This is part four of the grade 12 information technology prac paper for paper one for the exemplar of 2018 and we're looking at the database question. We can look at the database handling part in this example. We will be dealing with the same tables that we covered in part three with the SQL. Um, just to remind ourselves, there's TBL players, which has the player ID, the name, the email, and the date of birth. And then we've got TBL games, which is the game index, the game date, the player ID, which is the link between the two. So that's the foreign key for this table. Um, so that's how we know which player, the details about each player for that particular game date, the duration and the score of that player. So let's get to the question 2.2. So yeah, we get to the database manipulation. We have uh, three questions to do. Um, so we've got the players table, we've got the games table, and we've got some sort of control where we can display some sort of results. So let's get to it. So question number 2.2.1. We want to count the domain. So the users, we can have an input box. The user will enter in some sort of email domain, like a gmail.com, whatever. And we must display all the names and email addresses of those people who have that particular email address. And then we must also use those headings. And at the end, we must show how many there are in total. So we not only need to display all of them, but we need to be counting every time we find one that matches that domain. So there's the four steps that we need to do. So let's start. We're gonna to go to our code. There's our database. I know the tables aren't showing, but they are done when the program gets run. So when you run the, table, when you run the program, you'll see that the tables will be visible. So let's just believe that for now. So let's go. First of all, they've created a domain variable for us. I'm going to use that for my input box. Input box, and we'll say enter or domain. Enter a domain. And just a little tip, what I tend to do with input boxes is, is that last text field, I put in something that I'm always going to type in often. It just saves time in an exam that you don't have to keep on typing gmail.com. It's going to be there automatically and you can test it quite quickly. So that's just a little tip, so tip for that. So there we go. So let's see what else we need to do. Get an input box. Then we need to go through the entire, I'm assuming the, the TBL players because that's got the email field in it. And we are going to just check if that email that email contains the word gmail.com and if it does then we are going to display the name field and the email address so let's just double check with our tables up here oh, going too far no there we go so we're dealing with the name field and the email field okay so the, of tbl player so that just remember that okay oh getting dizzy with all this moving up and down okay so we're going to go through each and every record that's we're traversing the, the database table which means we're starting at the, the first record moving all the way through so we are going to need some sort of while loop so we're going to start with tbl players dot first and then we're going to say while not tbl players dot end of file and then we have our begin and end for our while loop end of while and then at the end of our while loop we will have tbl players dot next those are the three things you will constantly do if you are traversing a database going from the first record of a table to the last one so that's what we can continuously see do so what are we wanting to do we want to check if that domain is inside tbl players open bracket so we want to get the 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 email field. I think it's email like that, if I remember correctly. I think it's just email. No dash. So we want to check if the domain is inside there. Now, there, there are lots of ways of doing that. We could extract the email uh, value. We could find the position of the at symbol and then delete everything up until the at symbol and then see if that is equal to the domain. We could do that. Or we could use the function called pos. Now, pause if you remember from string handling, checks if the substring is contained in the second string. And if it is, it'll return the position of where it is. If it's not there, the position will be zero. So we are looking for this domain. We are looking for the word, for example, gmail.com inside of the email. So that's what pause is going to do. And it will return a number. 
and we want to check if that number is not a naught if the position of that is not a naught or if it's a, a positive number so greater than naught either one of those would be true if the gmail.com the domain they typed in is inside that email somewhere we know we have found a match and if we do then we want to display it in that memo control rich edit i think it was a rich edit yes rich edit display dot lines dot add we had to display the name now to get the person's name we're going to do something similar to this so we're going to display the name that will be a string field so we don't need to do any conversions then i'm going to put a hash nine and then i'm going to put the email field so it displays it like that fantastic but what we should probably do before we do anything we oh they've already cleared the rich edit but they want us to put those headings in so let's put in the heading so that's not that uh, let's go uh, rich edit display dot lines dot add and the headings are going to be player in capitals then a hash nine then email address so player plus a hash nine plus email address and I put a little dash there between the E and the email. So there we go. So we display our little headings. We do that outside the loop because we only do that once. And then we display all the names. Let's see if that works, first of all. Please work. Let's see if it works. And we're not on that one. We're on this tab. We're going to display the user account. We want gmail.com. You see, we don't need to type it in. It's already there. And it looks like we've got the right results. If I look here, although they're in a slightly different order, but they're all there. So that's why there's nothing about the order. Only thing we need to do now is we need to also, the question says we must also show the total number of addresses. So every time we find a match, we must also count it. So we're going to need some sort of count variable. They've already made one for us. Before we start doing anything, we should probably initialize it to a zero. And when we find it, not only are we, oops, scrolling down, difficult. When we find a match, we're not only going to display it, but we're going to increase our count. And then we want to display it like that. So we want a blank line and then total for gmail.com is a six. So we're going to, after we've done everything, we're going to rich edit display dot lines dot add. We're going to add nothing. So we add a blank line. Uh, and then we're going to say rich display dot lines dot add. We display the word total capital four. And now we're going to put in whatever the domain is. So I'll put the domain field, which is a string, followed by a colon and a space, followed by our counter variable. But our count variable is an integer, so it's converted from what it is, an int, to what we want it to be, a string. So let's see if that works. Okay, wrong tab. Let's go display gmail.com. There we go. We've got six results. So that seems to have worked. Fantastic. For the other the other questions are from this exam paper, this exemplar, go to our YouTube channel, go see the other parts to it. And remember to follow us on Twitter, follow us on Facebook, follow our YouTube channel, and remember don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long Way.